we've been working hard the last couple of weeks to bring you an amazing new architecture to allow us to easily add adapters and tree shake your code. Today I'm gonna go over the new release and I'm gonna show you some undocumented APIs that you can use that are really cool. So without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, so check this out, Tenstack AI Alpha 2. Every modality, better APIs, smaller bundles. So I'm not gonna go through the whole article, I'm just gonna show you what the best parts are. And the best part that we dropped with this release is the new adapter architecture. So what we had before is a huge base adapter that had all the functionalities inside of it. Well, we decided to split it up into smaller chunks and each chunk is responsible for handling its own part and functionality. So for example, instead of importing OpenAI and then having all the logic inside of that, we just split it into OpenAI text, OpenAI image, OpenAI video and so on. And the best part about it is that now we also brought the other modalities. We brought images, video generation, text to speech, transcription and many other features. So now you can pretty much cover almost all use cases that you might have with Tenstack AI and that is really awesome. And another part why this is so important is because why this matters. So why this matters is because this allows us to incrementally and easily add new features in through adapters. So for example, if you want to do video generation for Entropic, if they drop, if they ever drop one, is really easy because what we would have to do is implement video generation just for Entropic, drop the adapter with only video and that's it. We don't really have to do video for all the adapters. We can just do it for that one. So that's why this is really important for us. We can incrementally add new features and because we're a small team, this allows us to ship faster. And of course, it's easier to maintain. It's better bundle sizes for you because we don't bundle what you don't need. And it allows for faster and easier contributions because now you don't have to implement a huge adapter. You can just do very incremental little features. And as I said, we brought in new modalities. So structured outputs, image generation, video generation, audio generation, transcription, and text-to-speech. With this, we kind of covered almost all use cases for AI. And there's a couple of more that we're planning to add in, but I'll leave that as a surprise. And finally, there are some API changes. So because we're in alpha, we're still iterating over our API design. And after talking a lot about the core experience, we realized that we made some mistakes. And the first mistake is defining the model under the adapter or rather next to the adapter in the root config. And why we think this is a mistake is because to get the type safety you expect from Tenstack, you have to do three steps. So first of all, you need to define the adapter then you have to define the model and then and only then you get the type safety. But what we've decided is we are moving the model into the adapter. So by the time you define the adapter, you already have the type safety on and you really don't have to worry about anything else. And if you forget to define the model, you're not going to have unsafe types. And this is going to make sure that you're directed onto the right path. And another thing we decided is that we changed the name of provider options to model options. And the reason we did that is because it doesn't make sense to call it provider options because you are sending the options to the provider, but they are options for the model you're interacting with. They're not options for OpenAI, they're options for ChatGPT4. And that is why we decided to rename it so it's a little bit more clear to everybody from beginners to experts what this means and to navigate the code base easily. And the last change that we did was we flattened the root config. So before you would define the options as an object and then do temperature and max tokens and stuff like that in that object. Well, now it's on the root of the object to be closely aligned to all our other utility functions like generate image, generate video and so on. And this is kind of what the final diff looks like. So you would define the adapter, you would define the model options and then temperature on the root. And another thing that we've added in this release that I want to showcase to you is create options utilities. So check this out. Now we are in an app and this app is built using Tenstack AI. 
and I'm gonna go to the API 10 stack route and look at this. So if I scroll down here, you can see that we have a lot of definitions for the AI and all the way down here, we have our chat function. So this chat function is using these tools. It's using a system prompt. It's using all of these cool things. But what if we wanted to define this in another place and have that reused across our app? Let's say this agentic workflow here is something that we want to reuse on three or four endpoints. And then how do we do that? We would have to copy this and move it around places. Well, what we did was provide you with this. So what you can do is you can do something like this. You say const opts is equal to create chat options. And this create chat options is available across all modalities. So if you wanted to do image, you can do create image options or something like that. So create video options, create transcription options, whatever. And what this allows us to do is define an adapter. So we can do something like open AI text. We're going to do GPT-5.2. And what can we do then? Well, we can define tools. And for example, I'm just going to copy paste this. And then for example, let's do the system prompt as well. And the ag agent loop strategy. And that is, for example, our guitar agent. Now, what we can do is we can say guitar agent and just spread it inside of here. And check this out. So now that we spread it, the type safety is still there. And let's say we decided at one point that the guitar agent is not going to return text anymore it's going to return a structured output. So a structured output is basically telling the LLM what the JSON should look like when it responds. So what we can do is here, we can just say output schema and then do something like zod.object and we wanna do something like text is zod.string, it's optional, whatever. And now if I scroll down here and I hover over this, it returns a promise that returns either text with string or undefined. So constraining it to our output schema. And if you had four agents using this chat method, this would be changed across all four of them. And you can actually construct really cool advanced use cases with this because you can actually construct the options and then export them from some file and import them in a lot of other files and use them there really easily. And just to prove that, we can just move this guitar agent. I'm going to cut it from here. I'm going to go all the way up here and I'm going to define it somewhere around here. So now if I scroll down here again and hover over this, you can see that everything works still. I've, let's say I've imported the guitar agent from somewhere. And if I go there, I can just say, okay, I don't want the output schema anymore. I'm going to remove that and save the file and now you have reusable options across your app and you can do this for every modality and i love this feature because it allows you to construct options wherever and then just pass it into the chat and you can create reusable pieces of logic and use them across your app and another cool thing is that when you want to define the output schema we actually support standard JSON schema, which means you can use any standard validation library that is compatible with standard JSON schema, which means you can use something like Wallybot, you can use Archetype, you can use Zod, it's really up to you and you bring your own validation library and we use it under the hood. So that's it for today and the overview of all the new features. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you like the video, like it. And if you want to implement it at your work, share this with others. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.